This example is talking about a parabola with its vertex in quadrant 3 that opens up. And then ask a couple questions about that. But before we even do that, we need to define some terms here. Uh, let's talk about a parabola first. Parabola, in this context, is an equation, or a, a, a curve, um, of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When you graph this thing, um, it makes a certain kind of U shape, right? I'm just graphing some arbitrary parabola, right? I don't know, something like this. All right, it can open up or down. So this one, this one is opening up. This very bottom part here, this is called the vertex. That's the other word referenced in this example. Okay, so there's vertex. And um, of course these here are the x-intercepts, right, where it crosses the x-axis. So here we have x-intercepts, I'll just say ints. And somewhere up here, uh, I kind of drew it a little big, but somewhere way up here it's going to cross the y-axis, maybe right there, y-intercept up here. Okay, so there's the terminology we had to get down so that we can talk about these examples with the quadrants. Oh, one more, one more bit of terminology. The most important one here for these are these quadrants. So when you draw your, your xy plane, right, so here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, um, you start in the upper right-hand quarter, and this is quadrant one. And these are done with Roman numerals. And then you work your way around here, but I guess this is counterclockwise. So you go here, quadrant two, down here, quadrant three, and over here to quadrant four. Okay, so we don't use these quadrants much in algebra, but you use them a whole bunch in trigonometry. So it's, it's good to get them down now so you're ready to go for trig. So, you know, we kind of use a little bit of reasoning here. All right, so let's, let's check this out. So for part A, we have, um, okay, so a parabola, with a vertex in quadrant three that opens up. Okay, so let's just draw an arbitrary, and you might not even have to draw it, you can kind of reason through this, but let's just draw one. I don't know, here we go. So there's our vertex in quadrant three, Q3. Okay, and it opens up. Well, here we can see that it's gonna have two x-intercepts. So how many x-intercepts does it have? Two. And if we were to keep on going with this, you could see that it's going to have one y-intercept. Well, all parabolas, it turns out, have one y-intercept, but they don't all have one x-intercept. Okay, so I could have drawn all kinds of different parabolas, right? We could have drawn one over here. We could have drawn just a little tiny parabola. It's all going to be the same. It's going to give you the same answer. So it doesn't matter how you draw it. You just pick one and draw it. As long as you get the vertex in the white quadrant in the correct quadrant, um, it should it should give you uh, pretty quickly the answer to these kinds of questions. Let's try another one. Now we have a parabola with vertex in quadrant four that opens down. Okay, so let's draw an arbitrary parabola down here in quadrant four. Okay, with the vertex that is down in quadrant four, that opens down. I want to make this one a wide parabola. I don't know. It's up to you. It, you know, no matter what you do, it'll give you the the answer you're looking for. Um, hmm. Well, I'm seeing one y-intercept, but no x-intercepts. Right? If it's in quadrant four, if the vertex is in quadrant four, and the parabola opens down, there's no way it can ever touch the x-axis. Okay, so here we can see that there are zero x-intercepts, um, but one y-intercept. Okay, so just a little bit of reasoning and just getting used to parabolas and quadrants. These ideas will be useful when we go to graph parabolas.